We are given the function h of x equals log of x minus 4 plus 1. Part A, we want to find the domain of h. So remember, with the logarithmic function, the argument must be positive. So we just set our argument, in this case, is x minus 4 greater than 0 to find the domain. So x minus 4 is greater than 0. Add the 4 to both sides. So we get x is greater than 4. So in interval notation, we can write our domain 4 to infinity. Now we want to graph the function h. We can graph this using transformations. So we want to first identify our parent function. So if we ignore the negative 4 and the plus 1, we can see this would just be a plain log x graph. So our parent function is log x. And remember, no base is written in, so we assume it is a base of 10. That's the common logarithm. And you can even write that in there if you'd like. You don't have to, but to remind yourself. So when we make our table of values, we're going to want to table a column for our parent function, log x, and then our new function, log of x minus 4 plus 1. So we want to talk about the transformations that have occurred in this, the graph of this parent function. So we'll look inside the grouping symbol, inside the argument, and we can see we're subtracting 4 from the x's. So, so we're subtracting 4 from the x's. We know that's going to be a horizontal shift. write four units. So in order to perform that transformation, we're going to add four to the x values of our parent function. Now, if we look outside the grouping symbol, we've got a plus one. So we know that's going to be a vertical shift up one unit. So in order, in order to perform that transformation, we're going to add 1 to the y values of that parent function. So we first want to list our key points on our parent function. So remember our key points, we can't use 0, 1, and negative 1 because we can't take 0, or log of 0, and we can't take log of negative 1. It has to be, that argument has to be positive. So remember our key points are a little different. 1 works. You've got the point 1, 0, because log of 1, the power of 10 that would give us 1, is 0. Remember, log of 1, regardless of the base, is always 0. Then our next key point is our base, which in this case is 10. So log base 10 of 10, the power of 10 that would give us 10, is 1. And then our other key point is 1 tenth, 1 over the base. So if I take log base 10 of 1 tenth, the power of 10 that would give me 1 tenth would be a negative 1. That's the reciprocal, would give me the negative 1. And remember, our logarithmic functions have vertical asymptotes. So we've got the vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So now I'm going to add 4 to all the x values here. So that 1 will become a 5. That 10 will become a 14 and the 1 tenth will become a 4 and 1 tenth. Now we want to add 1 to all the y values. So our 0 will become a 1. Our 1, <coughs> excuse me, our 1 will become a 2. And our negative 1 will become a 0. Now our vertical asymptote, that's a set of x values. So we want to add 4 to that set of x values. So now our vertical asymptote will be x equals 4. So let's go down to graph it. So we'll sketch our axes here. So we've got to go all the way over to 14, so we're going to leave some room here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And on the y-axis, we only have to go up to 2 and really down to zero, but I'll mark a few extra units here. <clears throat> okay, so let's sketch our vertical asymptote. So at x equals 4, so that's going to be our boundary line for our ramp shape. And now we want to graph 5, 1. So we'll go over 5 and up 1. 
and we want the point 14 to, so way over here, and then we want the point 4 and 1 tenth, so just a little bit past 4, 0, So we can connect with that ramp shape, and this gets really steep here. So this should look like it's increasing here. I'm a little messy, but that's definitely increasing. So there's our key points. So we can see that increasing ramp shape. Now from the graph, we want to determine the range of H. So we can see it's from negative infinity to infinity. So we know that although this gets really flat here, this increases infinitely. There's no horizontal asymptote here. It's just a vertical. So this does increase, get higher and higher and higher. Clean this up a little bit here. OK, so our range, negative infinity to infinity. So let's go up to part D here. Now we want to find h inverse, the inverse of h of x. So I'll first write my function in the y equals form. So I'll write it as y equals log of x minus 4 plus 1. So remember for inverses we want to swap the x and y values. So this will become x equals log of y minus 4 plus 1. So now we just got to get the y by itself here. So we need to rewrite this without the variable, without the y in the argument. So we can use the equivalent exponential form here. And remember, with this common log with no base written in, we know that's a base 10. So our equivalent form of this in exponential form will first need to subtract this 1 over. So before we can isolate y, we first have to isolate the logarithmic expression, the log of y minus 4. So I'm going to subtract that 1 from both sides. So that'll give us x minus 1 equals log, and you can remind yourself the base 10 of y minus 4. So now that the logarithmic expression is isolated, now we can rewrite this in exponential form. So the base of the log is 10, so the base of our exponent is 10. The logarithm is always equal to the exponent, so it's going to be 10 to the x minus 1 power, and that's going to equal the argument y minus 4. And now we've got that y out of the argument, and we can isolate it by adding 4 to both sides. So we'll have 10 to the x minus 1 plus 4 equals y, and we'll rewrite with our inverse notation. So h inverse of x equals 10 to the x minus 1 power plus 4. So we can see, <clears throat> excuse me, we started with a logarithmic function, and we found its inverse, and it is a, an exponential function. Now we want the domain and range of our inverse. Well, remember, the domain of our inverse is going to be equal to the range of our function. So the domain of the inverse, h inverse, is going to equal the range of h, which we found is negative infinity to infinity. And then our range of the inverse will equal the domain of h, which we found is 4 to infinity. Now we want to graph the inverse function. Well, if we already have the graph and these key points of our original function, we can just switch these x and y values and get the corresponding key points on our inverse function. So in order to graph the inverse, all we need to do is use those points we already found and switch the x's and y's. So we're going to switch x and y values of our original function h. So that first point, 5, 1, will change to 1, 5. 
and that point 14.2 will switch to 2.14, and then our point 4 and 1 tenth, 0, will switch to 0, 4 and 1 tenth. And then we had a vertical asymptote of x equal to 4, so that vertical asymptote now becomes a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. So now we have key points and the asymptote of our inverse function, and we can sketch. So now, if we look at the points we need to sketch, we need to go all the way up to 14 on the y-axis, so give yourself some room here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <clears throat> we only need to go from 0 to 1, or sorry, 0 to 2 on the x-axis, so we don't really need to go very far. Can erase some of this. Okay, so let's sketch our boundary line, our horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we'll sketch the key points. So we want 1, 5. And we want 2, 14. So this becomes very steep very quickly. And we want the point 0, 4 and 1 tenth. So it'll be just above that 4. So 0, 4 and 1 tenth. And we can use that horizontal asymptote as our boundary line and sketch our very steep increasing ramp shape. <clears throat> 